Welcome back to Her Standards with me, Quinta Mbori. This is the show that is all about celebrating women. We bring to you female role models and we also bring you inspirational stories. Today we have Janet Mbugwa with us and we are talking about generally how she's been able to transition from being a media personality into the advocacy space. Very interesting, very inspiring. Uh, we are coming to you from the Curve by the Park. Lovely place, you can bring your family for meals, vacation. I'm told they have a Sunday brunch. Maybe you need to try that out. Now, to talk to us, we are available across all social media platforms at Katie and Home, or you can talk to me directly, why not? At Quint Ambori on Facebook. Queenie Mbori on Instagram and Queenie Saina on Twitter. Just before we took uh, the break, we were looking at your experience or your life uh, before you transitioned, you know, how you managed to survive in media. Yeah, it is a survival, by mm, the way. I can't tell you the next sport. <laughs> <laughs> You can say that again. So now looking at some of the work that you do uh, in that space of advocacy, one of them is actually you being the founder of Inua Dada. Mm -hmm. You know, Dada is a very unique name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uplift a sister. Uh, up, oh, uplift a sister. Yes. Why? Because, you know, women, girls, even boys and men, people know what they need. Sometimes we just need to lift them up to get there. Mm. So when you say, I want to help or I want to, um, sometimes helping and aiding sounds a little bit condescending. It's just they know what they need they know the tools sometimes they have the tools they just don't have the resources and the platform and so inua dada through and through provides both resources and platform why do i say that yeah. resources like i mentioned is, is things like information to um menstrual health information reproductive health especially for teen moms some of who you know we work with in, in some communities and products but when it comes to platform we have, for example, In Wadada Voices, which is one of the programs we're really passionate about. It's a youth advocacy program where we equip young people with the tools to speak up. Because people want to speak up, but we know how cancel culture is so real. So somebody puts out a tweet and everybody comes for them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people would say, I don't want to get involved in that mix. But you, but you, tell, you tell them, but you have a role. Do you want to? So when we put out the call, the call out on my platform, I said, if you're a young person who's interested in changing things around you, and so the ones we're working with, um, one of whom, unfortunately, we lost, um, it's, it's hard to say that because he was a male ally, male advocate, because oh. it was one of the three programs that we've had yeah. both men and women. Yeah. And then they say, six months later, they say, I feel more confident. They'll tell, you, they'll tell us things like, now I feel like I've made a difference in whichever space I'm in, mm -hmm. and it's because we equipped them with the tools for confidence. We launched a campaign the other day called Hatuta Sita. Mm -hmm. Because it's been 26 years since the Beijing yeah, women, we say yeah. Hatuta Sita like Hatuta Rudy. Yeah, we're not going, going back. back to Egypt. We're not going back to Egypt, <laughs> and we had a dance with it and everything with my we, kids. I am going to challenge you on that dance because I I'm believe I, can, you do I can dance better than you. Oh man, yes. really? Yes. <laughs> I had Asian teach me, so I don't know whether, yeah. So my kids every night are like, what Hatuta Sita? <laughs> It's an original track from so, us, so I love it. It sounds so good. Thank you. Yeah. That's, mm. that's, by the way, Quinta, that's all advocacy. Aww. Whether you're singing it, Shiks Kapianga attended uh, my event and she said, whether you're an actor, use, use that and spread your message. If you're a footballer, use that and spread your message. So advocacy isn't just this thing where you have to be in a conference, mm. in a summit. Yes. You could be anywhere. You're doing advocacy with this show. Yeah. Her standards is advocacy because yes. you're saying mm -hmm. we need to uplift women yeah, and also position and their narrative. Set very high standards. Yeah, I think yeah. it's like standards, standards, standards. standards. Please, <laughs> please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so advocacy comes in different shapes and forms. Yeah. Better for Kenya is a project I've been leading for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my incredible team are based out of the U.S. It's in a collaboration with people like the Gates Foundation, yeah. and we we collaborate with influencers to amplify gender equality messaging. That is advocacy. Whether somebody is a rapper, whether somebody is um, a TV person, whether somebody is a musician, we come together once in a while and we carry out short-term campaigns with influencers to talk about gender equality. That is advocacy. So advocacy lives in different ways and shapes and forms. And by the way, I didn't even know that's what I was doing. It's only recently that somebody named it for me, like two years ago, they said, oh, you do advocacy. I say, well, is that what it is? Because <laughs> I was just saying, I'm having conversations. Yeah. But if it takes up advoc if it comes out as advocacy, mm -hmm. and remember, we know about the issues we face every day. Yeah. 
but sometimes people like you me and other influencers are there to remind people of the urgency yeah. it's urgent yeah. let's talk about it yeah so so in Dada, better for kenya um in Dada voices generation equality forum mm -hmm. all these are the spaces in which i live to extend advocacy it's mm -hmm. just different platforms yeah but the core is the same the core is the same yeah one of the problems that is plaguing this country and I'm using the word plague very intentionally. I read somewhere, I don't know how true this is, that 65% of women have no access to... Sanitary towels. Really? Yeah. In 2021? In 2021. What are we going to do about it? <sighs> what are we not going to do about yeah. it? I just feel like, um, again, it's, I know the, the theme for this year is it's time for action. Yeah. The Menstrual Hygiene Day, which mm -hmm. was launched in 2014, mm -hmm. so it's an annual day, 28th of May every year. Yeah. And so I liked the theme this year and I was telling the Secretariat, it's, it's a good theme because we're all actually just tired of having the conversation. Menstrual health needs more funding. You know, it's the route, by the way. It's so sad. There's a research paper that came out from the Dominic, um, Dominika Kulczyk. She's a Polish philanthropist. Mm -hmm. she, did, she financed one of the few research papers in the world on menstrual health. And it came out that it is one of the most underfunded social injustices in this world. Literally, they compared it and she said, some sectors get let's say 500 million yeah. in comparison mm. to menstrual health which gets 10 million or 5 million yeah. globally yeah. for me it's a punch in the stomach because you're saying yeah. that my that my predisposition yeah. is not important but it is because some women is. can't go to work yeah. because of menstrual disorders yeah. some girls can't go can't to school go to sex yeah. for pads is a big thing that Princess that just, <laughs> that that just no, it's, it's, drives it's, me nuts so we need to mm. push for more support from governments. Look at what Scotland did. Scotland made so much noise and now pads are free for every woman in the country. Wow. But it's because of many years of consistent mm -hmm. lobbying, lobbying and fundraising, yeah. mobilizing, even though it's a government initiative to say we're now going to make access free, we'll find out later how they intend to do it. New Zealand has just followed. So countries are going to have to say we can't be left behind. We can also have that here. But if you have things like people have vested interest, yeah. corruption, not having the empathy to feel for a family that's going through this issue. If you don't have those, then you can't realize it. So we just need to keep making noise and knocking doors the way Scotland did, and we will have success, but it's gonna be a journey. Yeah. We have come a long way. The fact that we can, this year on Menstrual Hygiene Day, that whole week, I was on different TV stations. Yeah. I remember in one of them I was saying, the fact that TV stations are now talking about this on air, live, mm. prime time breakfast is already a big step. Okay. So, so we're, we're getting somewhere, but man, the gaps are bad. The gaps, the are, gaps bad. are bad, yeah. And you know, uh, is it just only a conversation that me and you should be having because of our gender orientation? Mm. Is it a conversation that should be all inclusive? Has to be. Including men? Has to be. Are they watching? Yeah. <laughs> you know why? Are they listening? Yeah. Men are the gatekeepers of, um, you know, how it, it's patriarchal, the yeah. world we live in, the society we're in. So men are the ones who will tell a woman, you're not clean, mm. you need to go to that hut and menstruate. Yeah. Men are the ones who say, you're not allowed to come to a place of worship. Remember, we lean into the leadership of men. So whether or not you can't argue it. We are a patriarchal society. So if the patriarchy holds those notions, they'll persist. Over the seven years or so that I've been in this space, there are so many more male allies. So many. There's even men who wear T-shirts with a picture yeah, of a pad. Yeah. You talk about there's one who calls himself period, period, period man. man. I there's know. another one who calls himself the pad man. Oh. And he walks around like in places in Kibra and yeah. gives out pads. Yeah. Men are realizing when my sister or my mom or my girlfriend is suffering, I'll also suffer. That's why now they're coming in. Because they're saying, by the way, and it also shouldn't be that. You shouldn't do it because your sister. Just do it because I'm a human being. Yeah, it is the right dignity. thing to do. It's the right thing to yeah. do. But this conversation is for everyone. My book, my first time, has an imam. It has a pastor. It has a hip-hop artist. It has my father. So I profiled about eight, nine men because we need men involved. We need men involved. When men are involved and they set the standards about how women will be treated, it begins to change. So men and boys... Boys at a little age, mm -hmm. well, not that little. Mm -hmm. And I say that because my mom is always like, please don't tell me you talk to who they're married about, <laughs> about periods. Like, please. But eventually, when they're 10 years yeah, old, they, need to they also need to understand. You mm -hmm. don't say, okay, boys, mm -hmm. please go to the cafeteria. We yeah. now need to talk to our girls. Yeah. Try and find a way to make them understand that when a girl stains her dress, she's not laughed at and she goes into depression. So periods are a very 
normal biological process, they are also extremely disruptive. People have lost relationships because of periods. People are in abusive relationships because they have a heavy period. People have lost jobs. It's very disruptive. So we need to stop looking at it as this small thing. No. It is a big deal. It's a very big deal. Girls are married off young because of their period. You started your period. Let's go find your husband. Oh Doesn't God. matter if you're 11 years old. Yeah. It's a very disruptive thing. So if we look at it holistically, look at it as a development issue, we'll address it as such. So Janet has a book. Yes. Yeah, it's called her, My First, my first Time. time. Her, first her, time. Her, her standards. Her First Time. Her standards. Her standards, yeah. It's called mm -hmm. My First Time. Yeah. If you have a daughter who's headed back to school and she's an adolescent, you need to pick up a copy of my book, My First Time. Uh, it's just about different women narrating their first, the first time they experienced their monthly periods. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to write that book? I think I would go out in the field, in schools, in communities, yeah. and people would still be scared and shy to talk about it. And remember, when you're shy to talk about something, you don't delve into it, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's dismissed yet it's affecting you. So I said, what if we used storytelling as a tool to make this message simple? I love storytelling. I'm, I'm also a content yeah. creator. I'm a creative. Mm -hmm. So I just said, I'm just going to gather stories of women and men who look different, who come from different backgrounds to mm -hmm. show, number one, periods are normal. Mm -hmm. Number two, everyone menstruates. Believe it or not, when I was putting this book together, there's a lady, she's a corporate lady, mm -hmm. and I told her one of the women I'm interviewing is visually impaired and another one has a disability. And she asked me, you mean women with disability <laughs> also have their period? No. And that was sad because this is a woman in the corporate space in Nairobi. So there's all this <sighs> misunderstanding. I, I know, I was very shocked. I said, yeah, but see her reproductive system is the it's same, the same. As It's ours. not blind or, or deaf. Yeah. Or, yeah. But then I included women who, are, women who are blind. We don't think about how true, they can. True. We don't think about a woman who's looking after a child who has Down syndrome. That's yeah. one of the stories we yeah. covered. Imam, I really wanted to learn about a Muslim man's take. And the truth is, all these people who push the stigma, it's false. He was telling me, no, in our culture, in our religion, we respect women and we respect whatever transition they're going through. So those men who banish women are not following our religion. They are false. Oh. So I had um, some certain celebrities in the book. I had people who are not known, people who are not. So for me, it was, let's hear people's stories. And just before COVID, I was actually going on a school tour. I had hit Eldoret, mm. and I liked that a lot of the girls were saying, this is nice because I can read a book and learn about, oh, I have a rugby player who's there. She's a woman, she was a mm. rugby captain. And this girl was like, oh, so you mean I can actually do sports even when I'm on? So that was the whole idea for my first time is, please understand, your first time is not supposed to disrupt your life. Volume 2 is out. I am to launch it very soon, but it's, it's um, going it's to be the, It's in the pipeline. It's in the pipeline. It's going to be available online as well. And mm -hmm. there'll be several other versions that I will release over the years. Oh, so okay. it's, Now, the second version has African stories, not just Kenyan. Ooh. We have stories from Rwanda, mm -hmm. from South Africa. Amazing. So, yeah, I, it's one of my passion projects. I really love it. So, oh, yeah. And, and the kind of um, feedback or impact that you were expecting, did you get it? I did. We were yeah. just, we were, we were onto something and then the pandemic. But just before the pandemic, as I mentioned, I did a menstrual health conference, yeah. um, which had about 200 attendees. We had a panel that was very inclusive because I know I like how you mentioned inclusion, yeah, diversity. Yeah. That's the heart heartbeat of in Wadada, and that's mm -hmm. the heartbeat of our menstrual health program. Mm -hmm. Is you think of everyone. We even had people who are deaf. Oh. They tell you, you guys think it's hard for you to access information. Think about me, who can't hear you, who can't see you. So the impact was really there. We went to Eldoret, and then just as we were going to schools, everything shut down. But just as the pandemic was two months in, we sold out. So that was good. When you sell out, you know you're onto something. Yeah. But I really, the dream was to go around the country and tell these stories. And I know we'll do it again. We'll do it. As things are opening up, mm. we are going to do it. So the impact was felt because there was a lot of conversations um, at nights just to to pick it up and, and take it. But digitally, we're still having the conversations. Still, still going on. Mm. Is there a moment when you do what you do and you feel like, I just need to fold up and go to mass, like or to the moon like Richard Branson? Yeah, Richard Branson, <laughs> yeah. A yeah. whole 70 year old yeah. going to the moon. I know, right? yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, well, some, well, some of your lowest moments in this uh, advocacy space. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, when you're carrying the weight of people's stories, it can burden you. My mom was telling me, 
the woman I was named after, <laughs> she was telling me you have no choice because the woman you were named after, my maternal grandmother, who I unfortunately never got yeah, to meet, yeah. Wamuni. My middle name is Wamuni, mm. which is almost like a nickname, but a family name, because mm. it translates to like cleanliness, purity, something. She was OCD. She was oh. very into her mm -hmm. cleanliness and everything. She, had, she carried people's burdens. So, interestingly enough, myself and my cousins, who live in different parts of the world who share my name, mm. we realized that we do advocacy so i think i realized there was a spiritual angle to it i know it sounds crazy mm -hmm. but like you're saying there's so many times i was like why can't i just stop everything go on vacation for one year you know be on a beach somewhere and just live up my best yeah, life yeah. but then i wake up thinking about those issues mm -hmm. every day i wake up even when i don't want to and so during COVID, remember when we all had to yeah. like isolate and yeah. have meetings with ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> i asked myself is this something that you're going to do forever? Why are you doing this? You know, you have to question yeah. yourself. Are you doing it because of various reasons? Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the conversation with mom and dad. And mom was like, it's the, the woman you were named after. But mm -hmm. also, I realized this is something I wake up thinking about. So yes, there's many times it's been hard. Mm -hmm. There's many times I'm like, is it even making a difference? Yeah. There's many times I'm like, what am I doing? But each of us has a seed in us yeah. that was planted. Yeah for impact. Mm -hmm. Each of us, mm -hmm. in our own little way, mm -hmm. when you... <laughs> I'm tearing. <laughs> I was like, I want Quinta to cry, Ivana. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. You okay? Uh, yes, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. mm. Mm. I think if we, whatever little thing you do or say, like I even mentioned for you, doing this program, that's impact. You, ha you can do it. People think you have to do these big, amazing things. Yeah. No, sometimes it's just talking to somebody. Sometimes it's uplifting somebody. Yeah. And so I extended that on the platform. And that's why my platform is about making you have the tools to speak up for yourself. I don't have to tell your story. Yeah. Yeah. You know your story, mm. but maybe you don't know how to share it. Mm. Maybe you don't think that you have a right to share your story, but you do. So I'm a believer in that. And yes, do I get burdened? You do, but to whom much is given, much is, much is expected. You, you give yourself all those sayings mm -hmm. and just knowing that this is who I am, because I came to that reckoning when I had a meeting with myself. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Janet, this is who you are. This is your passion. This is your purpose. So just lean into it. Some days will be hard. Some days will be okay. And that's where I am now. There are hard days. They're very burdening days. When you're sitting with people hearing their stories. When I did a thing called My Why yeah. with Youth Advocates, mm -hmm. and most of the young women who stood up said, my name is so-and-so, and I'm a survivor. My name is so-and-so, and my sister was killed because of GBV. Yeah. It's hard. It's so hard to hear that every other person is being affected. It burdens you. But then, the empowering factor is, I'm doing my best to equip you with the tools to heal, psychosocial support and to tell your story. Storytelling is therapeutic. Yeah. Africans, women, <coughs> men, we need to tell our stories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to be guided and encouraged. So yes, there's hard days, but it's, it's, it's what, I, what I love to do. And I mix it up with, with, with the digital space. Sometimes I enjoy it. I did a virtual period party. I had so much fun. <laughs> we were raising awareness, but we were also talking about if your period was a movie, what would you call it? <laughs> Sometimes I'll do TikTok. You know, so mix it up. Yeah. Advocacy is just about spreading the message, message. and yeah. not being pretentious or problematic about it, but you can do it in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it is who I am. It's what I love doing. It's something that I intend to do for the rest of my life. Nice. And even if there's hard days, I just remind myself this is who you are. So, Clearly. Yeah. Now you just mentioned that you, you also are a mom to two adorable sons. Mm -hmm. And then you have this weight of uh, uh, dealing with uh, the stories that you have, yeah. you have to interact with, so you have you're carrying this heavy load at home. You have, so you, yeah, who also want you to go home vibrant. They don't <laughs> expect you to go in. You know, you need to be mummy. Yeah. You need to be perfect. Yeah. yeah so what keeps you grounded? <laughs> they keep me grounded because, like you're saying, they remind you. They're like, that's not my problem. Uh -uh. What she dealt with out there. You need to. But I'm honest with them. Yeah. It, it sounds crazy, but yeah. I'm very honest with my kids. And I've, they've learned to ask, how was your day? Mm. And I ask them. So sometimes when they ask me, my two and a half year old asks me, are you happy? Uh -huh. Aww, so sometimes I'm that like, is so sweet. it's very sweet. My older son sometimes will say something like, you're doing your best. Oh. It's, it's when you engage kids, oh. 
because they are just small humans. Yeah. So it helps that I'm honest with them. Sometimes I say, mommy is so tired today. Please just be, you know, be I'm nice. tired. Mm -hmm. So I'll put you in a corner. I'll give you your books and your toys. Just let me go lie down. Yeah. So I think I've just learned to be upfront with them. They're still very young. And of course, there's times it's, but I've tried to build that with them. Mm -hmm. I've tried to make them aware that not everyone will be happy all the time yeah. around you, yeah. but it shouldn't affect you. So maybe I'm raising young advocates, mm -hmm. hopefully. 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 Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. yeah. No, I know there's one thing that I can do better than you, and that is dancing. That's so far. <gasps> Don't say you're going to make me dance. I can, I can dance better than you. We're going to dance at the end of it, but... Um, there are things that you do better than me, or you actually excel at. So what are these three things that, and people don't know, they are not on Google, they are not on social media, they are nowhere. Okay. You're revealing them for the very first time on her standards. Three things about Janet that people don't know. You're about to finish. Oh my gosh. Before we dance. Before we dance. <laughs> ha. Mm, I think, I think I have, oh my gosh. <laughs> I like, Superhero action Ooh. movies. Okay, that's not something I do well, but something that I like. Mm -hmm. So Transformers, Avengers, Ooh. Big Geek. Recently, I've fallen in love with go karting, like the racing mm. on tracks. Yep, and quad biking. Wow. Um, so now I've become addicted. Now, now I really like it even more than my kids. Because I was taking my older son. He's almost six because he likes it. Now I'm the one going. So maybe that's something that people may not know, but it's definitely. Now I enjoy it. It's become like a new hobby Aww. of like going on the race track Aww. and really become the tomboy that I was. Mm -hmm. You know, Quinta, I was a misfit growing up. Really? Yeah, I shared it recently mm -hmm. a little bit on my social media. Mm -hmm. I had this weird deep voice. Mm -hmm. So I was made fun of a lot. And so from a very young age, I was insecure. I was scrawny. You know the way some kids are just, I was just super yeah. scrawny, mm -hmm. ashy, all those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was a misfit. I think... The saving grace is I had an incredibly and have an incredibly supportive family, but I didn't fit in because, as I mentioned in a video I did on social media, for the boys I was too girly, and then for the girls I was just weird. <laughs> you know, so I carried that for a long time, and it's only when I started doing debating when I was 14, mm -hmm. and I excelled at debating, maybe mm -hmm. that's something mm -hmm. I can say, like mm -hmm. maybe for Quinta mm -hmm. I can excel at debating, <laughs> and I became the best speaker in Mombasa National nice. Schools. And I was like, oh! So the confidence started coming and then media really helped. Mm. So when you see me saying things like I race, go-karting, go -karting, yeah. um, it's because that misfit is always there. Yeah. She's always going to be there a little bit, mm. but right now I just, I hug her. Mm. Instead of saying, because I used to be like, why can't you just be like other people? Why can't you just be normal? Why can't you be a girl that likes to wear dresses? I used to cut my hair. Yeah. My mom would come in and she dropped her bags and she said, did you just take scissors and cut your hair? Because I wasn't comfortable in the skin I was in. Yeah. It's taken a long time. Mm -hmm. But still, once in a while, she shows up. This girl who likes to go go-karting. This girl who wants to sit down and watch the Avengers. This girl who can stand and look up at the balcony and waiting for helicopters and aeroplanes to fly over and tell my sons, Helicopter! <laughs> Weird. That's just who I am. And I've embraced her. <laughs> so I don't know if, there's, if, there's, if that stuff people didn't know. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit private. And as much as I can talk yeah. about my projects and my work, I think because of all those things I dealt with, there's a lot of things I keep close to me. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I, I've now gotten to a good place. 30s is a good place. I think 30s, so. 30s are dope. You're just like, ah, yeah. this is who I am. Yeah. Love me or hate me. <laughs> <laughs> this is just who I am. That's so true. I think I'm a bit of a geek. That's what people don't know. Okay. I can be a nerd. And I have a twin brother <laughs> who's a nerd. So he made me. You have a twin? I have a twin brother, yeah. Oh. A twin brother who... Um, is a super nerd. What would you like to tell our view viewers as your pan as your parting shots? <sighs> that your voice matters. Cool. Your voice matters. Um, not only is it a collaborative project today with Equality Now and you know um, using notable names, whether it was Amina Pinky, hmm. um, David Murray, all these people yeah. who we know in the space. Yeah. Again, using and plugging into influencers to amplify gender equality messaging. But your voice matters because um, it's these situations that are happening every day affect you more than you know. So when you sit back and say, that's not really my problem, that issue isn't really happening to me, believe it or not, it's a th stone's throw away from you. And so your voice matters. Use it in whichever way. Use it in whichever way. You don't have to, as I mentioned, wait for this monumental event. Tweet it. WhatsApp group. 
when you're having your family dinner, talk about an issue. When you're at a chama meeting, when you're at the mall, when you're with your friends or family, have the conversations. Your voice matters because people's lives depend on it. And so if we're not raising awareness, because all of us have something that we can speak to or speak for, whether it's our stories or the stories around us, your voice matters. So please use it. Use it, use it, use it. I want to ask you why you started Her Standards. Why is this important to you? Quinta, let me throw it back to be like, why did you want to do this kind of show? That's a very good question, Janet. I feel like you're about to say, you'll answer it next time. Oh. I feel like you're about to play me. No, 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 I'm not about to play you. Yeah. Now, Her Standards um, is actually a platform that we created for women, a safe space for women to come and tell their stories, to give them a voice, but also to set standards okay because we believe that uh, what is happening what we have been seeing is that many women have not been given the opportunity or they do not have the tools or the know-how to have their stories out there and somebody somewhere we say we our aim is to transform lives one story at a time oh, one that. story at a time and the her standards is actually an acronym her can mean anything to anyone but to us it means a high exciting or exceptional and realistic standards. Wow. Does it make sense? I love it. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's powerful. Thank you. And thank you for the platform. Thank you. You, you, you know, I, mm. I think platforms like this are, are so necessary. Thank you. Um, and, and, and hard work. Mm. People are like, oh, how do you do all these things? Work yeah. hard. Yeah. Faith, family, and focus are the three F's in which I live my life. So work hard. There's no shortcuts. Uh, so work yeah, hard. I love it. Thank you. Faith, family, and focus. And focus. Yes. Well, on that note, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we, we have come to the end of today's episode of a woman you need to know mm -hmm. on her standards very exciting very insightful conversations and we hope that you can join us by connecting with us on social media across all platforms at ktn home or you can talk to me at quinton Bori on facebook queen Bori instagram queen isaina on twitter let us have these conversations let's keep them going today we were coming to you from the cab by the park very wonderful place where you can have come and have a good time with your loved one. On that note, it's bye for now. I am just gonna take Janice, Janet on, on a dance challenge. So let the games begin. Let the games begin. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs>
8 seconds and 92 milliseconds. In 2017 and 2019 World Championships, she won gold and silver respectively. On 6th August 2021, she set an Olympic record when she clocked 3 minutes, 53 seconds and 11 milliseconds. The Curve by the Park is located off the Southern Bypass in Nairobi where the city's vibrant energy comes together with a breathtaking natural topography of the Nairobi National Park. The Curve features a delightful array of 70 high-end apartments consisting of one and two bedroom fully serviced and fully furnished apartments as well as penthouses. The guest apartments offer scenic views of the city and the Nairobi National Park. Amenities to be found within the curve by the park include an all-day dining restaurant, a rooftop lounge, a pool bar, a fully equipped gym, an outdoor pool, and a welcoming co-working meeting space complete with a fully equipped boardroom. 